Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about CSCS nutrition calculations, and we're gonna be doing them by hand. On the exam, you cannot get a calculator. You can't bring a calculator, there's no on-screen calculator, so you have to know how to do the nutrition calculations by hand. We're gonna talk about some information from the CSCS book and go through some calculations with these question examples. Some of you guys have been asking about the books in the background of my videos, so I did add those to themovementsystem.com. You can also check out my CSCS study material on themovementsystem.com for more practice questions like this, and you can check out the full study course if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So let's start off here with question number one about a 70 kilogram male cross country runner maintaining his weight. How many calories of carbs per day does he need to eat? So there's some information that we need to answer this question. And the first thing we need to know is what are the carb recommendations for an endurance athlete? This endurance athlete is maintaining his weight. So he's going to use the carbohydrate recommendations of eight to 10 grams per kilogram body weight per day. So you can get that right off of page 215 in the textbook. And then we're going to use that eight to 10 range to make this calculation. Now, importantly, the question is asking about calories of carbs per day. So we're going to first have to go to grams and then we're going to have to convert grams to calories. So let's go ahead and get started by calculating the lower end of that range or the minimum amount of carbohydrate intake for this cross country runner per day. So to do that, we're going to do 70 kilograms body weight times eight grams of carbs per kilogram per day. So that's 70 times eight, we're gonna just do eight times zero is zero, eight times seven is 56, to get us 560 grams of carbohydrate is our minimum intake. So we're not done there with that 560 grams unless the answer choices are in grams, but in this case, the answer choices are in calories. You can imagine like A is 2,000 calories, B is 2,500 calories, C is 3,000 calories, and we need to know which one's right. So we're gonna convert these grams into calories. So the way that we're going to do that, we're going to take 560 grams and then multiply by the factor of four kilocalories per gram. What this means is this four means that for each gram, there's four calories of carbohydrate. This is actually the same number as protein. Protein is also four calories per gram. Fat is the one that's actually different and that's nine calories per gram. So anytime that you have grams and you want to convert to calories, you would just multiply by four if it's carbs or protein or multiply by nine if it's fat. You could also do it the opposite way. If you have calories, you could divide by four to get grams. So in this case, what we need to do is to multiply 560 grams times four, and that will get us 2,240. And the way we did that was just that zero times four is zero. Six times four is 24. So we carry the two, put the four down here. 5 times 4 is 20. We add that 2 to get us that 2,240 calories. So what we know so far is that this cross-country runner needs a minimum of 2,240 calories of carbohydrate per day. And if you were to see the answer choices of 2,000, 2,500, and 3,000, you might think that 2,000 calories is a lot for just carbohydrate and pick that. But no, we actually need over 2,000. We need a minimum of 2,240 calories per day just from carbohydrate for this athlete. And that's why it's important to actually do these calculations to get the right answer and not just guess because you'll miss so many questions if you just guess. All right, so let's go ahead on to the maximum here and calculate what's the maximum number of calories of carbohydrate per day for this cross country runner. The same thing is gonna be done over here, just this time we're using 10 because the range is from eight to 10. So we did the minimum of eight, now we're gonna do the maximum of 10 to get 700 grams, 700 grams times four, 2,800 calories. What this means is that this cross country runner should have a minimum of 2,240, a maximum of 2,800 calories of carbohydrate per day. Whichever of the answer choices is between these, so again, if we had A, 2,000 calories, B, 2,500, C, 3,000, in this case, we would choose B, 2,500 calories, because that intake is between this range, it's within the appropriate range. Hopefully that makes sense, and if this is a helpful video for you, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and other people can find this video and learn from it as well. Also, I did want to mention I do have another CSCS nutrition video, which I'll link in the description below if you want to check that out. 
All right, so let's go ahead on to question number two here. And for this question, we're using the same 70 kilogram male cross country runner. But now for this question, we know that this cross country runner is 15% body fat. And the question here is, what should the daily calorie intake be to maintain body weight? So for this question, what we're gonna have to do is calculate the total daily energy expenditure for this cross country runner. So you can imagine if this was a multiple choice question, you might have answer choices like 3,000, 3,200 calories or 4,000 calories. And you might have to pick the most accurate calorie count for this athlete to maintain their body weight. So to do this question, we have to use what is called the Cunningham equation. Now importantly, the Cunningham equation has an error in the textbook and the textbook says 550 plus 22 times lean body mass. The actual Cunningham equation is 500 plus 22 times lean body mass. There was a correction update paper that had that listed as a correction. So what you'll want to use is this 500 plus 22 times lean body mass when we get to the Cunningham equation. All right, but knowing that this equation has lean body mass, how do we actually find lean body mass just knowing that this athlete is 70 kilograms and 15% body fat? Well, this is really important. If an athlete's 15% body fat, then that means they would be 85% lean mass. So 100% minus the 15% would get you 85% lean body mass. If an athlete was 20% body fat, they would be 80% lean body mass. So if you wanted to calculate their fat mass, you would just do their body weight times their percent body fat, and that would get fat mass. But if you wanna calculate their lean body mass, you would do body weight times their lean body mass percentage. So in this case, we're gonna do the 70 times 0 0.85. And this is actually a fairly difficult uh, hand calculation, so I wrote this one out here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do the 70 times five first, and that's gonna be zero times five, zero, seven times five, 35, and you write that on the top line. Now again, we're gonna have to know how to do this by hand, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna drop a zero here in the first box, then we're gonna do the eight times the zero is gonna be zero here in this second slot, and then we're gonna do the eight times seven, that's gonna get us 56. So we should have 350 on that top line, 5,600 on the bottom line, and then we're gonna add. So at this point, we're gonna do zero plus zero is zero, five plus zero is five, three plus six is nine, and then five is just dropped down to five, and because there was two decimal places up here, we're gonna move that over to two decimal places here to get us 59.5, and in this case, that would be kilograms. So what we calculated here was body weight times the percent of lean body mass, to get us 59.5 kilograms of lean body mass. This means that 59.5 kilograms of this cross country runner's weight is lean body mass, which is basically everything but fat. Bone, blood, water, muscle, all that stuff is lean body mass, and that's what's accounted for here with that 59.5 kilograms. And that is what we're gonna actually use in the Cunningham equation. So the Cunningham equation is something you will want to memorize. It's pretty basic, but it's resting metabolic rate equals 500 plus 22 times lean body mass in kilograms. So you're gonna do the 22 times the 59.5 with the same math setup here. We're gonna put one over top of the other and multiply in the same way. And then once you get that answer, you add it to the 500. And in this case, that's gonna get us an arresting metabolic rate of 1,809 calories. Now really important here, resting metabolic rate is how many calories you would burn if you were just resting all day basically. I have a whole video on basal metabolic and resting metabolic rate, which you guys can check out in the description if you wanna learn more, but know that this is not your total daily energy expenditure. To convert from resting metabolic rate to our daily energy expenditure to get an estimate of how many total calories this athlete would burn in a day, you have to multiply by what's called an activity factor. That activity factor might be 1.3, 1.5, 1.8, 1.9 is the highest. In this case, this athlete's pretty active. He's pretty close to the top in terms of most activity. So I just went with 1.8. You can make a justification for 1.9 and you'll get pretty close to this answer anyway. But if you use that 1.8, you would do 1,809 times 1.8 to get 3,256 calories per day of energy requirement or total daily energy expenditure. Again, what this means is that we would estimate that this cross-country runner 
burns a total of 3,256 calories per day. And that's what he's gonna to need to consume in order to maintain body weight. All right, if you do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. If you have another topic that you want me to cover, go ahead and drop that in the comments below as well. This really should just give you a starting point for these types of calculations. If you want a lot more practice and an organized way to study, go ahead and check out the strength and conditioning study course on themovementsystem.com to learn more. In that study course, I have in-depth videos just like this. They give you plenty of examples on different calculations for different athletes, and it covers each chapter. So not only will you master the nutrition material, but you'll master the entire book one chapter at a time through in-depth videos. It's helped hundreds of people study stress-free in an enjoyable way and pass the exam. So if you're interested in learning more about that, head to themovementsystem.com and check it out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. What did the dietitian say when a strength conditioning coach showed up at their party? Invite him in.